Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our code today. There is no need for resting ECG in a patient who is complaining with effort angina while he is off chest pain. Is that true or false? Chronic coronary syndrome is a specific subtype of the whole of coronary artery disease that deals mostly with the patients complaining of effort angina so it is different from acute chronic syndrome either non-ST elevation or semi and it has a separate guidelines released by the ASC in 2019 to describe the investigations and the management protocols for them. So it may seem logical that I usually order the ECG for any patients with chronic chronic syndrome while he is having the chest pain. But the question that forced itself upon my mind, why should I order an ECG while the patient is chest pain free at rest? The logical question should be, what do you expect to find in an ECG of a patient with chronic coronary syndrome? In most of the cases, it would be normal ECG. That's why I expect but it may show other abnormalities that sometimes may alter my management plan. I may see pathological Q waves in the resting ECG, I may see villain sign, I may see left bundle branch block, or I may see poor R wave progression. When I detect pathological Q waves in resting ECG, I may ask myself, why didn't the patient mention that he had history of an episode of chest pain at rest that may suggest myocardial infarction? The problem is that sometimes the MI may be silent, as in patients with diabetes due to autonomic neuropathy, or may be unrecognized that the patient doesn't remember that he had significant chest pain, and that's why he didn't tell you this, and just he is coming now because of chest pain on exertion. In the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction released in 2018, the ATG changes associated with prior MI in absence of LVH or left bundle branch block include any Q wave in lead V2 or V3 more than 20 milliseconds or QS complex in lead V2 or V3 or Q wave more than or equal 30 millisecond or more than or equal 1 millimeter depth or QS complex in any two contiguous leads of one EVL inferior leads or from V1 to V6 or R wave more than 40 millisecond in V1 and V2 and R is ratio more than one with a concordant positive T wave in absence of conduction defect going with the same criteria of posterior wall myocardial infarction. So any one of these ECG features may suggest prior MI. For example, in this ECG, we can see here pathological Q waves from V2 to V6 and there is some residual ST elevation and this may suggest pathological Q waves in anterior leads, which may suggest an old anterior wall MI in a patient who is coming now and he is off chest pain. In this ECG, we can see pathological Q waves in inferior leads that may suggest old inferior wall myocardial infarction and we know of course that pathological Q waves may occur with a STEMI or even with non-STEMI. So pathological Q waves are considered to be one of the ECG features that may be seen in patients with chronic coronary syndrome and so it may change my management plan because I would suppose that mostly this patient has ischemic LV dysfunction and so his chest pain is almost anginal pain. Valence sign is one of the famous ECG features that may have two subtypes, either valence syndrome type A, which include biphasic T wave occurring in 25% of cases, or valence syndrome type B, which show deep symmetrical T wave inversion occurring in 75% of cases. What does valence syndrome signify? It signifies the presence of proximal LED occlusion or severe stenosis and so the cause of chest pain may be revealed in this case. In this ECG we can see biphasic T wave from V1 to V4 suggesting Villain syndrome type A and in this ECG we can see deep symmetrical T wave inversion from V2 to V6 which suggests Villain syndrome type B. And so what will be the decision in this case? Here the patient has villain sign in his resting ECG and he is describing typical chest pain. So here I would arrange for elective coronary angio plus minus revascularization, whatever the results of the echo, even if it is normal echo, and no need for non-invasive imaging because here the ECG has a striking feature that I would go directly for coronary revascularization. What about left bundle branch block? In most of the cases it is chronic 
left bundle that may suggest the presence of structural heart disease. For example, LV systolic dysfunction or LV infiltrative disease like amyloidosis, for example, or it may suggest old myocardial infarction. This raises a suspicion, of course, of LV dysfunction, and so when a patient is presenting with chest pain, I would suppose that most probably he is having ischemic heart disease, and so his chest pain is mostly anginal, and so this may alter the eye management plan that I don't need to do stress imaging because here I have a frank feature of abnormal ECG and mostly I would have an abnormal echo. Like in this example, I have here left bundle branch block and if I apply the Scarboza criteria, mostly this left bundle is chronic left bundle and so I suspect structural heart disease and so ECG and echo would be enough to diagnose chronic coronary syndrome and this patient is having angina pain in most of the cases. When we say poor R wave progression in ECG, we mean that there is delayed transition zone till V5 or V6. This means that the R is ratio remain less than 1 in all precordial leads till V5 or V6. And this has the same causes as a chronic left bundle like LV systolic dysfunction, LV infiltrative disease, or old myocardial infarction. So the presence of this sign raises a suspicion also of LV dysfunction and also of coronary artery disease as the cause of the patient's symptoms. For example, in this ECG, we can see here that the RS ratio is less than 1 till V5. So this patient is having poor R wave progression and from this ECG, I suspect the presence of structural heart disease and mostly if this patient is presenting with chest pain, I would suppose that mostly his chest pain is anginal in etiology. And so in the 2019 EC guidelines of chronic coronary syndrome, there is class 1 recommendation for arresting 12 lead ECG in all patients with chest pain without an obvious myocardial cause, and it is recommending during or immediately after an episode of angina suspected to be indicative of coronary artery disease, there is no restriction to restrict the ECG only during or only immediately, but in general, in any patient with chest pain, I need to have a resting ECG as the first step and then I would go for the imaging and according to the result of ECG and echo I would decide whether I would need another imaging modalities like stress imaging like CT coronaries or I would go directly for invasive coronary angiography and revascularization if there is frank abnormal feature. So if we revise this code that there is no need for resting ECG in a patient complaining of effort angina while he is off chest pain, it is completely wrong. And the resting ECG in this patient may save the need for complex investigations even in absence of chest pain because it may be normal, yes, in the majority of cases, but in some patients it may show abnormal features like pathological key wave, left bundle branch block, villain sign, poor R wave progression that may alter my energy in the plan and may affect my decision to go directly for invasive angiography rather than waiting for another investigation. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.